now look to Christine Jardine, MP, to close the case for the opposition. Thank you. Good evening, Madam. Good evening, even, Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you not just for the huge privilege of being able to take part in this debate this evening in the Oxford Union, but for having the last word, which is something I always appreciate. My name is, as you've heard, Christine Jardin, and as you can possibly tell from my accent, I don't come from the home counties. Actually, none of the guest speakers tonight come from the home counties. No, I'm the Member of Parliament for Edinburgh West. I sit at Westminster, which is probably the first clue as to why I do not support the premise of this motion. As a Scottish Member of Parliament, I am very much concerned with issues beyond the home counties. <coughs> and as for centralisation, well, I think it depends how you interpret the wording of this motion. This House believes Westminster's concerns do not extend beyond the home counties, would suggest that Westminster is only responsible for the home counties and only responsible to the home counties. I would say that it is because I believe in decentralisation that I do not believe that Westminster's concerns are solely in the home counties. It is responsible for decentralising power to the regions. It was, after all, Westminster which created the devolved <coughs> parliament in Scotland, the Assembly in Northern Ireland, and also in Wales. So Westminster can decentralise. Curiously, I agree with most of what uh, my honourable friend said about decentralisation, about the need to pass power out to the regions, but I disagree that this motion actually is the way to do it, because this motion would seem to suggest that Westminster should only care about the home counties. But that surely is to misinterpret as well what Westminster actually is. As I said, the four of us do not come from the home counties. I do not come from the home counties. And I sit in Westminster, in those opposition benches which are slightly more crowded since Theresa May's rush of blood to the head last summer, which opened up some spaces on her side of the house. And I sit behind the SNP. And every single SNP member is concerned about Scotland. They're not concerned about the home counties. They only care about anything north of Carlisle. To my left is normally Plaid. And they care primarily <coughs> about what affects Wales. And behind me, I have the DUP, Northern Ireland. So there you have Westminster. Westminster, which is made up of 600 plus MPs and God knows how many Lords, each of whom are responsible to different parts of the United Kingdom. Now, if you look at the figures, I can understand why you would think that perhaps the home counties is, you know, pulling all the strings at the moment. 34 of the 38 MPs are Conservatives. This is the most home counties heavy cabinet we have had for more than 20 years. But look at those figures another way. There's 34 Conservatives from the home counties. There's 35 SNP. There's 59 MPs from Scotland. There's more of a sway there. And I remember it's not so very long ago <coughs> that the complaints were not about the home counties running Westminster. The complaints were about the Scots running Westminster. We had two Scottish Prime Ministers in a row because he didn't often admit it, but Tony Blair was actually Scottish and went to Fettus in Edinburgh, which is just on the edge of my constituency. It's not in it, thank goodness. Gordon Brown. <laughs> we had two Scottish Chancellors. We had Gordon Brown, we had Alistair Darling. We had John Reedy Defence, and we had Robin Cook in Foreign Affairs. So the Scots at that point were running Westminster. So the balance of power changes. And that's one of the wonderful things about the United Kingdom. The balance of power changes. 
But think about what we talked about in Westminster. Oh yes, we've talked Brexit almost to death. And again, I agree with my friend on the proposition. It does hold the seeds of the end of the United Kingdom. Because if we dive off that cliff with Theresa May's hard Brexit, the Conservatives will be playing into the hands of those who would like another excuse to discuss the future of the United Kingdom. The Scottish Nationalists would grab it with both hands and say, look, you can't trust these English that have dragged us out of Europe. We voted to stay. We want another chance to vote. And yes, it would hold the seeds of our destruction, which is why Westminster and its approach to the regions and everything out with the home counties and within the home counties becomes so important. But it's not the only thing we've talked about. Since I became an MP, I've talked about universal credit. That affects everyone in the United Kingdom. If the rollout were halted, it wouldn't just be halted in the home counties, it would be halted everywhere. We've talked about pension inequalities for women born in the 1950s. If that is addressed, it won't just be addressed in the home counties, it will be addressed throughout the United Kingdom. And we've also talked about trains in the home counties, because frankly the home counties deserve to have a wee bit of the action in Westminster at times. But we all have the same goal. It's what Westminster actually is. And perhaps that was defined best by Barack Obama. When he came to Westminster Hall in 2011 and he spoke to Parliament, the first United States President to speak in Westminster Hall, and he talked about the relationship between the United Kingdom and America. And he said, we have one thing in common, which binds us more than our language, more than, than the Mayflower, and it is that we don't define ourselves by geography. We don't define ourselves by ethnicity. He said that if you're American or you're British, you define that Americanness or Britishness by a belief in a set of ideals. The protection of the rights of the individual and the rule of law. And frequently in Westminster, Every issue we talk about comes back to those two principles. Whether we are talking about RBS branch closures across rural Scotland, that's about the rights of those communities. When we're talking about Rohingya Muslims fleeing from Myanmar, that's about the rights of those individuals, those human beings, and that goes far beyond the home counties. And when we talk about Brexit, we talk about the rights of the individuals in this country who made a decision with which I do not agree, but they made that decision. And that is what defines Britishness. And if there is a single institution which defines Britain, it is Westminster. And it reflects that diversity. It deflects those ideals and when we look up the 600 of us who come from all over the United Kingdom, we do not see the home counties or Northern Ireland or Wales or Scotland. We see our responsibility to the people of the United Kingdom, to all of the people of the United Kingdom. And so I would urge you to reject this motion that the concerns of Westminster do not extend beyond the home counties. Thank you.